Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. And it's now time for another Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critiki McCritikerson. And that's what we're going to get into in just a second. But if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, go ahead and do that. Look for this orange box over on the website. Put your name, email address in it. Hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, as well as other free photo information and other offers and special things that come out from time to time. So definitely do that. And remember, now here on YouTube, there is an info button at the top. Top right corner, there's an I button that is replacing the annotation. So when you click on that, you can see other playlists to get more rapid fire critiques or just to go over to the website to see everything that we have there. So let's get into this critique. So here we go with the rapid fire McCritiki McCritikerson. We've got Harrington Colin 25, his best 10 images, and I'm going to try to limit these to 10 minutes, less talking, more critiquing, get through it quicker so that we can be concise and to the point, and now I've just drawn it out by talking a lot. So here we go. we got Colin Harrington. Uh, this is called Hummer in Flight. Hmm. Now, Hummer in Flight could also be joining the Mile High Club, but that's for certain people that are flying. So what have we shot here with? We have the EO 70D with an 18 to 270 kit lens, which explains the f.6.3 uh, out at 184 millimeters. Now, I've already checked, and this was taken in manual, so maybe he's going for a silhouette of the hummingbird. Now, I don't have a problem with that because maybe the light wasn't conducive to getting color. Maybe the bird was in the shadow area, and it, just, uh, it looks overcast. Maybe there wasn't a lot of color there, so this type of shot can work, but here is how I would have, I would have, what I would have done. I would have come in tighter. I would have uh, shot it tighter because at 184 millimeters, you still have room to get to your 270. Uh, and of course, this could have happened so quick that you weren't able to do that. But going a little tighter, actually in this case, a lot tighter. Let's see. We can zoom in. I'm going to do this. I'm going to make one of these type things. Something along these lines is how I would have done it if I was to crop. That's how you could see it on the screen. So that's what I would have done with that image. Let's see what we have next. Oh, that's cool. So this is an airport. Very nice looking airport. Holy Jesus. Where is this? I don't, um, is there a map? Maps. I don't know if there are maps. Um, no, I don't see it. All right, so we've got 24 millimeter f 2.8 IS. So one of those lenses that has the IS built in. We've got f 11, which is a long, which is a nice aperture right there. 24 millimeters and a five second exposure at ISO 100. So this is unbelievable. What is so cool about this is that because it's a five second exposure, he waited for the plane to be, that's a 747 it looks like, to be pushed back away from the gate all while having the shutter wide, well, not wide open, all while having the shutter open for five seconds. Now, you may be asking yourself, why is this blurring, but why at five seconds isn't anything else blurring? Well, there's two things. Uh, most likely, it's on a tripod, or the IS is so damn good at five seconds, because it's not a fifth of a second, it says five seconds, that the IS may, I don't think the IS can be that good. I would really think that this is on a tripod to do this with the IS on, even though the IS on a tripod is not really recommended, but I don't think you can handhold for five seconds and be this still and get the photo like this without any movement here, even with the IS. But IS does come in handy for something just like this. The plane's going to move and blur as you handhold, whereas everything else that's not moving is going to stay nice and still. That's one of the misconceptions about IS, and I've said it all along, is that IS is um, it's going to keep the background in motion uh, uh, still, but if you're shooting a subject that's in motion, say a person, or in this case a plane, that's going to blur. This is a really nice shot. I like it a lot. Nice job. Way to be creative. Um, okay, first things first, 24 IS, uh, 2.8 IS, f2.8, 160, 1 13th of a second. So maybe the other was a fifth of a second. It, it, you know, I wish it would tell me whether it was a fifth of a second or not because if it was a fifth of a second then yes you could handhold the last shot without the uh the, the mono the tripod um uh, this is just boring in my opinion right off the bat it's not contrasty and and still there's not enough color coming into it and yet yeah, it's, it's sort of this stuff silhouetted because we're exposing for this area over here but it's just flat and and i do talk about snapshots and photographs photographs in my opinion make you stop and question what is going on, or it elicits some kind of response or some kind of emotional experience. Whereas something like this, I look at it and I go, eh, you know, eh. And I'm not ripping on the photographer, it's just, it's a photo that makes you go, eh. And that's why I'm gonna move on to the next step. 
So this is a little better because so it's a longer exposure. I can see that before even looking. F20 100 ISO. So we're going to call this it's either 10 seconds or it's got to be 10 seconds, especially with the blur like this. But this is where a, a circular polarizer or some other types of filters, a gradient filter is going to come in handy because it's going to allow you to pump up the sky and still maintain that. This is where a lot of people will do HDR, which is multiple images uh, so that you can sandwich them together. I think it's a great concept when done right. Um, I like the exposures here on the rock. I like the blues down here in the processing and editing, um, but I would like to see more of the sky brought back. Now, if there was the raw file, you could probably bring the sky back within reason, but this is where a lot of people start to take multiple exposures of the same thing, just so one they expose for the sky, then this is, that's dynamic range. The cameras aren't capable of getting enough dynamic range like our eyes see to be able to discern from this is what the sky looks like and this is what the shadow area looks like. They're not there yet. That's why HDR, when done right, can work. But I like what's going on in this image. This is, it, it starts to work. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, F4, uh, 800 ISO 200, same thing, EO 7D. You know, it's an okay shot. You know, I don't, I'm trying, is that a Polaroid? I think this is a Polaroid. I'm trying to figure out what it is, but yeah, I think it's a Polaroid. Look, it, it, it's it's hard to say because it, it's just, it seems flat. I do want to see it pumped up. Not that pumping, I mean, pumping up is going to crush the blacks here. Um, it's just an okay shot of what's going on. Maybe a horizontal is going to be better in this situation because it's going to show you more of the sun setting, less of just the vertical nature. So I would try to do a horizontal of this so you can see the landscape. I'd probably go wider back so that you can see more of of the scene and everything around it. And being that the color is not the greatest in the world, I would consider doing a high contrast black and white of what's going on here. Now, I don't know if that would work because I don't have the image in front of me to edit, but it's just a, it's just an idea that possibly could work. Okay, so we've got a nighttime shot. Uh, this photo is currently not in any groups and there is no information about it for whatever reason. Maybe it's a film shot, but it's great composition. I like the fact that I can see what's going on outside the tunnel. We do have a story here with the person that's laying here, uh, and you got a person walking through. These lights are out, and these are leading you into something. So the leading lines, when we talk, so you have symmetry working here. You have leading lines working here. That means it's drawing you out of something, but it's even left to right except for this subject right here. But this is nice. It's a nice idea. It's a nice execution, and it works it does stand on its own, but in a photo story, I think it could be very cool. This is nice. So what do we have? Um, 18 to 135. Why you got so many kit lenses? 18 to 270 and an 18 to 135. Or maybe one replaced another after the while. But obviously, I, I think that one would be sufficient. And the 18 to 135 is probably a nice option. I like stuff like this. When you take an Instax photo and you hold it up, put it in somebody's hands, now it creates dimension in an image where a flat image is what you're looking at on the screen of the Instax image. When you put it into somebody's hand and you take a picture of somebody holding a photo, it gives it even more of a story. Um, it, it just gives you more of a story. It gives it more life because it stands out more. And that's exactly what I get from this photo. So nice job right here with this. It, it, it really helps tell a story because it's one person selected out of all, out of this group to show the image and talk, uh, well, to show the image, but you get the whole story of what's going on inside. Okay, um, where is this? Interesting. So again, it, it's that time of day, one one thousandth of a second, 800 ISO, Look, if we're going to expose for this subject right here, I don't mind that the inf it's like an infinite background that's not blown out and it's a kit lens being used, but I would like to see this person exposed better. If this person's exposed better, then it's going to become more... I mean, I think you, the, the focus would want to be the skateboarder. Now, in terms of the timing, the timing's off for capturing the skateboarder, in my opinion, for where he's landing here. At least, I think so. Um, we need some light in the face of this skateboarder. I'm not saying pop a flash, but I'm saying pull back on the exposure. You're at one one-thousandth of a second. You can open up to get the exposure back, and yes, the background may blow out in terms of lighting, um, but again, the, the, the scene with the tennis courts and all these poles are... It, my eye is drawn straight to these tennis poles, and obviously this person right here, less is about the skateboarder and more about the background. One way we can change this is up the exposure if you're editing it, go black and white, the focus should lock in on this person here and take away from the background a little more. Okay. Um, 
So we got like a portrait, f2.2 with a plastic fantastic, one one thousandth of a second. So this is all right. The focus is great. Look at the background, how it blows out. And we have nice separation. The eyes look to be nice and in focus. Really good to get the eyes right here. Uh, what is she looking at? I, I still think, I mean, yes, it's good. And I, I like sometimes off looking, not always having eye contact. But in the best 10 for your set, I think eye contact would be better here. Um, unless she's looking up at the hummingbird. In that case, then it would be interesting because then it's, start of a, it's part of a photo story. Compositionally, I like it. It's, uh, you left a good amount of headroom. That's like the right amount in, 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 to feel right. It's good on the left. It's good on the right. You've got just the hair flowing out of focus here. She's centered. I do want to see that eye contact. I don't dislike it because she's not looking, but I think eye contact would make it a little bit better. So it's good. Uh, the exposure's nice. The editing's pretty nice so nice job right there let's move to the next image that's a b so let's see what lens are we using here 40 millimeter macro or or i don't think that's a macro i just think that's a 40 millimeter uh that's the pancakey lens so it's okay i want to see more of the the b on there you know it, it, it's hard to see i mean I, I mean we got the we got the arms and whatever those things are called it's it's just it, it's nice. I would use more contrast. That's going to bring out this, and it's going to bring out the B as well. It's going to tighten up this background to be less distracting because it's going to draw you back into the image. I just want to see more of the B, um, or or less of the like more of the flower. So bring your angle down. I know. Look, this stuff happens quick, and and this is just critiquing things that could happen in the future or when you're seeing these images that may go through your mind, forgetting your composition. Because I know this stuff happens quick, and I don't know the situation that you're in. But here, with so little of the B showing, I could see getting down at a much lower angle, shooting up at the bee, so just the bee's eyes are sticking out over the flower. So the whole bottom of the image is covered with the flower, and then the rest of it is just the bee coming out of the top, hidden. Because it seems like it's hidden and it's coming out. That's how you could work with a, a, a composition like this. Just get a little lower and do that. Try that out. Is that it? Is that 10 images already? So I guess that's the 10 images. Let me go back to the critique, the top of the line. Yeah, that was. So, so this is... um. Harrington, so Colin Harrington's photos. There's some really cool things here. Just a little bit of tweaks, a few tweaks, and, and just compositionally, and you're going to be doing a great job. Let, let, like the hummingbird photo, really nice, just tighter. I can't say much about the, the, the plane photo. I think it's awesome. Um, I just love the fact that you practice and tried slowing the shutter speed down, freezing everything else, but getting the motion of the plane because we know that it's taxing. Way to make something that's inanimate in, in terms of photos, they're, they're two-dimensional, they're flat. Way to give it motion. Great job there. Definitely flat, a little flat here. Um, I talked about the going wider. You know what I talked about. But I love this right here with the hands. Very nice portrait. Way to go with the exposures. Working with the kit lenses, perfectly fine. Doing a great job doing what you're doing. And that is where... We'll leave it off. So I'm going to wrap it up right over here. All right, so there you have it. That's another Adorama Picks Rapid Fire Critique. If you haven't subscribed here on YouTube, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. But if you want to see other Rapid Fire Critiques from the past, click up over here. It's going to take you over to a playlist so you can check them all out. And don't forget, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can do so over on the website. Just look for this orange box. Put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations.